Uh, hello, my name is Jose Ferrero, and uh, I have spent the last 20 years of my life trying to understand, you know, you know, what is the role of technology in the well-being of our societies. Now, if you look at the picture that uh, is, is on the screen, you will be able to see a wonderful city with energy, you know, light, uh, basically what we all deem to uh, think that is a place where we actually want to live. Technology, uh, all the knowledge that we're putting in in trying to improve the nature of our, of our uh, living spaces is something that we more and more are trying to introduce at a rate that is completely unprecedented. You know, we have spent an enormous amount of effort in trying to work out technologies. You know, we want to extend our creativity to its maximum and we try to really uh, do the best that we can with technology to be able to live the best way we can. Now, the question that I always tend to ask myself is what is well-being? You know, what is living with technology the best way we can? And it's actually not an easy question to answer because effectively every time that we build something, that we create something, that we imagine something, every time that our creativity brings us to a wonderful place, you know, we create something that is very unusual and that is the wake. You know, we never really truly understand when we introduce technology you know, what is the real consequences of the technology that we put in place? You know, we put all these wonderful things in place. You know, we have all these fundamental drivers, you know, towards our well-being, you know, but we never really understand exactly what are the consequences of our actions. You know, some musicians one day said, understand the power of a single action. And the power of a single action is exactly the image that you see uh, in the screen. So, if you look at it, we always have drivers. That boat, that is driving in one direction is the driver, is the power, is the engine, is what is pushing us in one direction. But behind you know, that power that is driving everything, what you have is a wake. And now that wake is all the unintended consequences of our actions. So we introduce a technology, we have a very, very strong motivation. We want a sustainable world. You know, we want to live in a society that prides itself for its well-being. You know, we want to communicate ourselves every day faster. You know, we want to have buildings that are prettier, that are nicer, that are more user-friendly. You know, we want to have all these things. But every time that we take decisions or we introduce technologies, every time that we actually do something for the purpose of this driver, we're leaving behind ourselves a wake. Now, if you think about it, we're talking about the built environment. We're talking about buildings. We're talking about designing cities. You know, we're talking about uh, how we actually can exist in a very dense and organized society. Now, we're going to put these buildings in place, and we want to conserve energy. So we're going to insulate the building. You know, we want to have aesthetically pleasing society. So we're going to put wonderful things around our buildings. We're delivering wonderful shapes. You know, we want these buildings to be comfortable. So we're going to create beautiful spaces with you know, nice acoustic properties. We're going to put nice sofas so we can sit comfortably. And all these things are happening around us in a constant way. Now, next to that, there's going to be something else that is going to happen. Somebody's going to tell you, you cannot do that. Somebody's going to come and ruin your parade. Somebody's going to come and say, this is unsafe. Somebody's going to come and say, you should not be doing this because effectively you are affecting other people in a way that is actually not appropriate. Now, what are you going to call that person? You're going to call that person as an obstacle. It's a barrier. It's a constraint. It's the element that basically doesn't allow us to innovate. We want to do this thing. We want to create all these incredibly wonderful and exciting things. We want to move as fast as we can. We want to make sure that all these things are landing in, a, in, you know, in, a, in our life space as fast as possible, and they're actually bringing this well-being that we're all seeking. What are we using as the vehicle for that? Technology. We're putting all these technologies in place. We're putting all these things to try to basically guarantee that we have the well-being that we're all seeking. And then we have all these other nasty people that are telling us, don't do this, don't do that, don't do the other one. Think about the wake. Think about the legacy. Think about all the things that we're leaving behind. You know, many of us, you know, walk around cities and always complain about these horrendous 1960s buildings. We build them all over the place. We put this horrible concrete all over the place, and now we're suffering the consequences. Do you think that the architects or the engineers that put those buildings in the 1960s were going to be thinking that their wake, their legacy, 
was going to be the ultimate hatred from the world because of the horrendous buildings that they put in our cities? No. They were trying to do something special. They were trying to build fast. They were trying to do uh, novel things. They were trying to de deliver a better city. But they were not competent enough to understand what was the wake that they were leaving behind. So there is conflict. So when we're talking about the wake, there will always be some element of conflict. You have the fire, you have the water, and they're hitting each other, and there are two opposing forces. You have technology, you have the strong drivers that are pushing in all directions, and at the same time, you have the constraints. You have the barriers, the limitations, all these things that are trying to make sure that we're not moving too fast and that we're not going to leave a wake of negative consequences behind our technology. Now, this is the kind of image that you normally see, the super slim, the super tall. All this evolution of the high-rise, the skyscrapers, the, st the cities, all these things that we're trying to do to try to guarantee that our cities look better, they accommodate us better, you know, they're more dense, they reduce the energy, and to be able to achieve all these things, then we implement all these different technologies. And all these different technologies that we implement, in principle, are there to guarantee a better form of life. Now, but the reality is that with all these technologies come a lot of very interesting consequences. And we start innovating to a level where we get incredible forms in our construction. But those forms are enabled by technologies that we're putting in place. Now, what happens if these technologies start becoming very complicated? And these technologies are not very simple things, like the ones that we used to do 200 or 100 years ago. Now, these technologies have multiple components. And then all of a sudden require the integration of a number of different disciplines. And they require a number of different uh, people to be involved. And those people have to know more and know more and know more. They have to spend more time trying to understand. You know, they have to start spending more money in trying to make sure that these systems are done correctly and that we're actually getting you know, very, very, very nice pieces of technology. So all of a sudden, we have very complex systems. And these very complex systems then become very fundamentally complicated. Now, what response are we going to give? Are we going to do them right? What do we need to do them right? Are we capable of doing them right? Because I might know how to design my little piece. And I might know how to perfectly make sure that it works. But then I have to assemble it with somebody else's. And that somebody else has, again, a very deep piece of knowledge. He might not understand anything I am doing, but he knows exactly what they are doing. And then you have to assemble it with a third person, and a fourth person, and a fifth person. And then all of a sudden, you have a system that is so complex that not one single person can understand it. None of the individuals that were involved in the puzzle could actually understand how you could design the gherkin, which is that beautiful building that you see in the, building, in, in the, in the image designed by Norman Foster. Nobody really understands how the facade was actually designed because it has so many components that really, when you integrate them all, you've created a system that is way too complex. Now, who is going to tell you now that that system might actually attempt to you with your safety? And then you're not safe enough anymore. Now, we try to create something wonderful, something beautiful, something comfortable, something sustainable, something that preserves energy. But all of a sudden, we landed with something that actually is really not that nice. Now, this has happened in history millions of times. Technology is fundamentally a function of learning from disasters. This is what we call design by disaster. We learn from the mistakes that we make when we become incompetent in our attempts to be super competent. We're trying to put all these complex things to deliver a wonderful solution. And then what is the result? All of a sudden, we make a major mistake. Now, we can push the bounds of our knowledge. Today, we're trying to make buildings out of timber that are 40 stories in height. Have you ever seen a, a building that is 40 stories in height and it's made out of timber? Why are we doing this? Because timber is much more sustainable than concrete. Because timber actually is a pleasant, natural way of, of living. You know, we need timber around us because it's beautiful, it's comfortable, it's nice. So we're bringing all these great ideas, but now we're putting them all together into a 40-story building made out of timber. Is that a good thing? Of course it is a good thing. We want to innovate, we want to be different, we want to be wonderful. But at the same time, we're integrating all these things. Are we 100% sure 
that if we're making a building that is 40 something stories in height out of timber, that we're going to get it right? Can that building burn? What happens if there's a fire in that particular building? Do the people that actually are in charge of understanding the behavior of a fire in a tall building understand how that timber will work? Who guarantees us that that works? What if somebody tells us that is not possible, that that is too complicated, that actually it is uncertain in the way it's going to behave? How are you going to label them? The constraint, the blockage, the barrier, the person that is trying to prevent me from doing this wonderful thing. Now, we need to really always understand this conflict between the drivers and the wake. Now, the more we push, the more we need to think about it, and the more we need to remember about the wake. If we want cities like this, we are going to have to innovate. You know, we are going to have to create wonderful things. We are going to have to introduce complexity, and we are going to have to do very, very, very complicated things. And when we do those things, we cannot forget the fact that we're leaving consequences behind. And we need to really understand those consequences so that we really don't land in major problems. Look at this facade. We want to design this beautiful envelope for the building, wonderful management of light, great control of energy. Aesthetically, absolutely stunning, unique piece of innovation, an architectural landmark. But what are the consequences of designing a system as complex as this? This happened in the 1960s. You know, we introduced plastics into buildings, and all of a sudden, buildings were burning from floor to ceiling. You know, they were burning stories up and killing people left and right. Now, we, put a, we understood what the wake of introducing plastics into construction was, and we developed all the necessary knowledge, the competence, the technology to understand how to constrain our use of plastics in buildings in such a way that these things could not happen anymore. Now, the basic principle of that was this. Here is a picture of the World Trade Center 7, you know, when the fire started. And as you can see, the fire, while it's very severe and very big, it doesn't go up and it doesn't go down. We designed buildings that fundamentally contain the fire in one floor, and that made our buildings so much safer. We understood the wake, we corrected the problem, and we managed to deal with the technology that delivers tall buildings. Now, we wanted better management of energy in the facades. You know, we wanted to do them in a continuous, cheap, fast way so we can deliver better, faster, cheaper buildings, optimized buildings. Did we understand the wake of the complexity that we introduce into the buildings? Do we have the competence to actually deal with this complexity? This is a question that we didn't ask ourselves. Now, what we see today is a slight change. And all of a sudden, a problem that we had solved in the 1980s and fixed completely, all our novelty, all our technology has brought back again. And it has brought it back with a vengeance. Nowadays, every month, we get one of this. And there's going to be one that is going to hit us back. Now, the problem with understanding all the things, with understanding the complexity, is recognizing that to all technologies, to all knowledge, to all new things that we create, there is always a wake. So when we build buildings like this, you know, there is a wake behind it. There is something that we have not considered that we have to always keep thinking if we want to make this building safe. Constraints are there for a reason, and we want to have them because they make us think twice when we create completely innovative things. We can leave, let our imagination run. We can design everything that we want. But if nobody tells us stop and think about the wake, we're going to be always fundamentally taking a risk of not thinking what are the consequences of our actions. So to wrap up this presentation, I don't want to be the one that rains on everybody's parade. I don't want to be the one that actually says that technology, innovation, creativity should not be allowed to run free. All these things should happen, but don't disrespect the person that puts the barrier, that puts the constraints, that puts the blockage, because the purpose of that person is making you think about the wake. So please never forget about the wake, because that's the way that we guarantee that our wonderful societies is as safe as it should be. Thank you very much.